What's going on today YouTube? We're going to be doing a wheel seal in this John Deere 7410. So let's get this wheel popped off. This tractor's got the early John Deere front end on it. Some of these they put the ZF front end on and some of the newer style John Deere ones had the cylinder inside of the axle. We're going to be doing the big wheel seal on the outside of the hub. So as you guys can see, the seal's been leaking pretty wet in here. It'll get all over that rim. This is going to be the big outer seal on the back side of this hub here. Ain't too hard to take off. We'll pop off it'll be that bolt, another one back there. We'll slide that outside of that hub off and we'll be able to get at it. So there's what she looks like on the inside. You have your three gears going around. Now there's a washer underneath of this shaft that you want to make sure you have in there when you slide it all back together. But here's the nut. This holds this outside where them gears ride in there. It's going to be a little screw we got to take out there, pop that off. We'll be able to spin that out and pull that off and get the inside of our hub out. The tool we're using to turn this loose has some bolts welded to it and a nut on the back side. Normally these aren't too tight, but it'll be important when we're going back together to torque this because this sets your bearing load. The planetary carrier came off really nice at the splines on this one, but they do have two threaded holes for if you have to screw bolts in and push it off. So now for this outer bearing, I normally wiggle this housing just to get the bearing kind of loose from the race and easier to pull it out. And once I pull it out, I do this now just so it doesn't fall on the ground or into the bucket when I pull the rest of the housing out. So when you're popping this off, you're fighting what's left of the seal, so it might feel kind of funny, but a couple taps, you'll get a little room in there, get a pry bar in there, and be able to pull it right off. So as you can see up on that ledge there, that's where dirt and debris kind of gathers up and goes in there and wrecks that seal. A lot of times you'll have net wrap or something get up in there, it'll just hurt that seal. So we want to make sure and get that all cleaned up really nice. So here's our culprit of a seal that was leaking. It's going to be this guy right here. Now it takes a special tool to drive this in, and we got one of them. Right here is what that tool is going to look like. But another thing to note, on some of these styles, this bearing, it stayed on our axle, but sometimes this bearing needs to get put in first before you drive the seal in. Otherwise, you'll put the seal in and won't be able to get the bearing to go through it and have to wreck the seal and put a new one in. I always make sure when I'm cleaning this up just to kind of get the rust out of here and just get a good surface for this new seal to push into. And with this all apart and cleaned up, this is a really good time to check your front wheel bearings. And you can look on the actual bearing for signs of wear in the rollers and you can also check out the race and see if there's signs of wear there as well. So now it's time for our new wheel seal. And with this special driver, it really helps get a nice even load for pushing this in and the seal is actually a mechanical seal so it has to turn so if you try and tap it in by hand I'm afraid you'd wreck the seal And you always want to double check after you drive this in to make sure that the seal still turns inside of itself. This one was all good to go, so it's time to finally start reassembling this tractor. I always make sure and put a little grease on this bushing that sits inside here. This supports your shaft that comes in from the planetary.
Now this shouldn't push on too hard and you want to make sure and go nice and even with it to make sure and not wreck that seal. One thing you don't want to do is forget to put this bearing in. This would be a bad day. Now when you're pulling this off, it's not a bad idea to mark this on what splines it came off of, because when you're going back on, they can sometimes fight you and only line up on certain splines. And as you start to turn it back down, it could be a good idea to kind of turn the wheel just to move those bearings to make sure they're sitting in there straight. We got pretty lucky on this one, as we torqued it down, our bolt hole lined up perfect with where it locks it into place. And the last thing, you want to make sure you have an o-ring here on the outside of this. We went ahead and replaced it on this one. So just from moving it around that little bit and cleaning it, that little washer I was talking about that's really important fell out of place. So we're going to go ahead and put a little grease on him and put him down in there and push the shaft into it to keep that locked into place as we push it back up onto the hub. This is also a good time to individually check these three gears and make sure they spin all right. What it is inside there, there's roughly 50 needle bearings to each one of these that makes it all go around. This part can sometimes be the trickiest part. You have to line up the inner shaft and as well as the outer planetary gears. It's also a good thing to keep in mind that the two bolts that hold this hub together while the wheel's off need to get lined up as well. Now this back hub can be turned, but it's easier to do it from the start. So on these tractors, you're not able to spin just one wheel off the ground. So what I like to do is put the tire on before I fill it so I can raise both tires off the ground and have something to turn and get it lined up to right where the fill line is. Alright, so now for the easiest part of the job, breaking in the wheel seal. You gotta drive the tractor for about 5 minutes or so under 5 mile an hour. Make sure you get that seal broke in. Because that is a mechanical seal, so the one part is turning on the hub and the one part is going with the axle and staying on it. So just to break that in and make sure that it doesn't slip and then it would start leaking again.